What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's edition of the All Things Georgia Call-In Show, presented by UGASports.com. I'm your host, Paul Meharry. Joined alongside me, as always, Andy Stowe and Eddie from Ackworth. We're glad that you're here with us on this uh, last Sunday before G-Day, last Sunday before the Masters. Uh, had some fun stuff going on, though. So we got to watch the Women's College Basketball Championship. We'll touch on that a little bit, even though the dogs did not make it in there. We've also got uh, we've got a rundown this show. Andy Stowe made a rundown. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's not going to be just jumbled up jargon. We're going to try to stick to a script, and I appreciate that. Uh, so we've got Georgia football for you, Georgia basketball, Georgia baseball, and then a bunch of stuff about the Atlanta Braves because – we say this is the All Things Georgia show, and for whatever reason, it's partially my fault. We haven't uh, delved or dove quite into the uh, Atlanta Braves as much as I'd like to. So uh, before we get going, though, guys, if you're watching, long-time watcher, short-time watcher, in-between watcher, let us know where you're watching from. Put it in the comments section. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Your comments, your uh you know, everything make this show what it is. So we can't do it without you guys. If you feel froggy enough and want to jump on, the link is in the description. We've got one spot down there by Eddie from Mackworth. We'll tell him to move over to the right and we'll have you on and uh, we'll uh, we'll bring you in. So we appreciate you watching. And if you're listening to us on the podcast rerun, we appreciate you uh, listening to us on your ride to work on Monday morning. So we've got Gators KB from Buford. We've got James Caraway in here. He says, hope Andy led with the Braves. He didn't. He didn't. He uh we're, we're going to get to it. We've got Rhett Womack. I always see him in here. We got Zach, hey, the bro. chosen one. What's going on? We got Lucky hey, he's Man. Watching, the chosen Bill. one is watching WrestleMania. That's right. Cody Rhodes finishing the story tonight, baby. That's right. And that's why we talk about real sports here, folks. <laughs> Eddie, how are you? Not pretend sports. I'm good. Uh, missed you guys last week. Hope you all had a happy Easter. Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah. It was nice to spend some time with my family. But I got to say this real quick. So Friday afternoon, uh, I, I, Bill Shanks, who hosts uh, the Bill Shanks show on the Superstations. Oh, yeah. um, great, great radio show across the middle of Georgia. Does a fantastic job. And he was kind enough to allow me to be on the show pregame for the Braves for about three hours. And it was really fun. And there were two calls. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It was oh, really yeah. fun. Okay. Okay. I'm just uh, yeah. There, this- Dale Murphy came on. Dale Murphy was <laughs> gracious. I talked to him. So I'm just minding my own business, talking a little bit on the radio show. And two callers call in. Andy from Royston and Paul from Buford. And I and I just sat there with headphones on and they blistered me, obliterated me on the air and humiliated me. And I didn't appreciate it. So those two callers can kiss my ass. Hey, I made up for it at the end, though. I I, I did. Well, I did you, yeah, OK, but I didn't want to bring that. That ruined the story, Paul. I can't right. bring that up. Right. Andy, how are you, my friend? <laughs> well, because we did not get to go to the Braves game and get to meet Val Murphy. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I just showed up. There was no invite. You could have come. You could have driven your car from Royston. Didn't know it was the thing, brother. What? Uh, Didn't know it was the thing. Didn't know it was happening. Oh, okay. Well, I, well, I, knew, I knew it was happening. Next time I'll text you and call you that I sent you a text about it, okay? How about there you that? Go. Make, sure, make sure you text them to call to text to make sure you email to yeah. do all these things. No, I'm doing good outside of not getting the invite to go see Bill Murphy and hang out with Bill Shanks. And if Bill's in the comments, you suck for not inviting me. Me and Paul, but no, that was it was fun to call and roast Eddie. But no, I'm I'm good. The Braves swept, and yes, James were leading off. The Braves did sweep the Diamondbacks, and hey, all is right in the world almost. Before we get to baseball, because I do want to touch on baseball for for uh, over half the show at least. Yeah, uh, I want to talk about this uh, Georgia football team. Obviously, they had another scrimmage this past weekend. They're G Day scrimmage will be uh, this upcoming Sunday. People complain, and and I'm curious. It's it's on the weekend of the Masters, Sunday or Saturday of the Masters, and for whatever reason, I don't know why they ha- they they haven't changed this date. You know why, Andy? I didn't know. I was commenting to to Jermaine King. He was asking oh. me a question. Oh, <laughs> well, you're mouthing "I do" while I said I don't know why they haven't changed it. Um, I would think they would change that. No, yeah, I would too. Like, they had spring games this weekend. You know, it's it's not out of the ordinary. You could change it to this weekend. Every, everybody would be fine with it. You're a week past Easter. Uh, you could do this Saturday. Be totally fine. I, I don't get it. Yeah, Clemson played yesterday, so it doesn't it yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know why they're trying to make people. Choose but the game one kicks the off at, at two. One o'clock. 
one o'clock. One. Okay, well, that's even better. For me, I'm going to sit there. I'll probably watch the G-Day game. And then what's that? Two hours, roughly, right? Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing with that, though, Eddie. It's the perfect, perfect time if you want to sit at home, right? Watch oh, G-Day. Yeah. Well, you're you're talking about doing that. Yeah, 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 that's different. But I'm right. talking about if you want if you want to go. Right. You're kind right. of thrown, you're thrown yeah. for a loop there. You can't have both. Yeah. You yeah, have to go to the stadium. You know, I'm sorry. I, I, I really wasn't thinking about that, but you're right. Yeah. People want to go. They're missing the masters. Cause they're not, cause for me, I'm going to sit there and watch oh, the yeah. one to yeah. three and then right into the, into the masters. Right. On yeah, Saturday. If you're at home. It's, it's the perfect yeah. Saturday. It's yeah. just, if you want to go, it's a little right. hard. That's the only, that's a good point. I'm sorry. Question yeah. I have with that. Um, but do you, do you think that affects attendance on Saturday? I think, oh, man, that's tough. I think you have a lot of people and I, and this is why I appreciate G day. You know, with it being a free game, you have a lot of people that can go to that game that don't have season tickets. That yeah, not that they can't afford season tickets. It's just they're tough to come by, and or they don't want to take their family of six, you know, to a, a game. Uh, there's only eight games, right, or, or less than that sometimes uh, per year that you can go to with your family. This is a uh, it's a different type of crowd than what you would see at a normal game. If it was a normal game crowd where you've got those season ticket holders, those yeah. big money donors, yeah. yeah, it would probably affect attendance. But with it being a free event, you get a lot of locals that get to come in and get to see the dog. So I, I don't think it will affect it that much. And I also think, I'll, I'll say this, Paul, a lot of those people showing up, maybe half of them don't give two craps about golf anyway. I know most right. people watch the Masters, but it's Saturday. It's not the Sunday of Masters, right? Correct. It's st- I know it's moving day, and you know what that means if you're a golf fan, but it's still Saturday, right? I mean, that's missable. You don't want to miss Sunday. Yeah. Uh, James Carraway says, save up some money and use two, spring, two screens. Spring day gets the big TV, then we switch to Masters coverage. Uh, let's see. Kierik, he says, curious how much Masters will be behind. Thursday and Friday's weather looks really oh, bad. Oh, I didn't even think about that. It, it always happens. It always yeah. happens, boys. This is all things Georgia show, so we've got the Masters in Georgia. Seems like the past, I don't know, five years, they've, they've had really problems. The good thing, though, is with that grass, <laughs> they can dry that stuff out in like an hour. I mm-hmm. went one week uh, to a practice round. No, excuse me. It's a Friday round. <clears throat> got rained out. We got called off the course, and within like an hour, they had that thing. Now, where we were walking, where the, the patrons were walking, was rough. You had yeah. folks slipping and sliding, but the greens were were perfect. So yeah. you had that ready. Uh, Paul, you, you did mention you said the game, the G Day game, is free. It's five dollars now. Yeah, they changed the yeah. They changed the, it. Yeah, it was been five dollars for at least the last two I, years. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was bring a can good, and you got in. No, no, no it's five dollars to see. Ah, well, yeah. got to make some money. That's right, right. nil baby. You got to fund yeah. it. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put some money towards nil. I don't know if you can do that though. Uh, <laughs> oh really? You can't. Yeah, do I don't. It? I don't okay. How about Miss? Miss doing that then? Isn't that I don't happening? know. I don't know if you there's probably some that. shifting that's going on, Paul, that we don't know about. Right. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. It transfers. It, it ends yeah. up in a casino in Mississippi, and somehow <laughs> comes out the other end. <laughs> you know, looking a little different. Uh, when it, when it uh, William Gleaton, Go Dogs from Annapolis. We appreciate you watching, my friend. We've got a question, though, here, guys, and we'll ask the uh, folks that are watching as well. Who are you most excited to see in this G-Day game? Who are you most excited to see in this G-Day game? Andy, I'll start with you. You've been quiet so far, so who you got? Um, I'm most excited to see what Rob Robinson does because I was – I, I feel like, that's, easy, easy, I feel like that's a really easy answer. It is Rob Robinson. Oh, Robert Robinson. Robinson. Okay. Because Sorry. I thought Trevor Etienne was going to be, you know, kind of be the guy, and which I have three guys, so I'll give you my three. But um, with Trevor Etienne being maybe suspended, so I'm going to see what Robinson's going to do. My next guy is Ernest Green. I want to see if he's able to take that step from good to great at left tackle. And then, of course, Naz- Nazir Stackhouse. You got to see how we can do a pivot, mm. et cetera. So those are my three. Okay. Okay. So Ernest Green, I don't know if you'll see a ton from him in G Day, maybe. Might I don't know Nazir? You might see a little bit. I think out of your three that you picked, Rod Rod probably will see the most action. He'll be the yeah. most talked about out of those three in mm-hmm. terms of uh, the the fans talking about a guy. Who you got, Eddie? Well, I, Andy said Nazir, and um, who's the other one on the line? Um, sorry, Ernest Green. Ernest Ernest Green. Green. I mean, sorry, Andy. The, it's touch football. They're they're not they're not really oh, going to show no. anything in G Day. You know, I mean, if 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 
if they get to the quarterback, the play dies. You know, they don't even continue it. So it's hard to kind of tell. That's why I pick skill players, right? Because that's who everybody's talking about on the G Day game. I'm going to go with Dom Lovett. I want to see if he's dominant, like Kirby says. He keeps talking about how Dominic yeah. is dominant. I want to see that. And I want to see what Colby Young's doing. I've heard so much about this kid, and Kirby's raved about him. Maybe he's injury free at this point. I think he's had a little nagging ankle injury. But I want to see him too. Those are the two guys I'm watching. So had we only picked one player, I would have gotten mine, but you took mine, Eddie, on your <laughs> second pick there. Uh, I'm curious to see what Colby Young can do. I'm, I want to see him in person against uh, the other wide receivers. He's a big guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see what he looks like uh, standing next to, you know, all the other wide outs and things of that nature. Does he tower over them? Does he kind of blend in? You know, what, what, what does he look like? We've got some good comments over here about, Guys, they want to see. We've got first off Hayden Stowe watching. What's up, brother? How are you? Uh, James Carroll said, uh, Yeah, that, I had to click off that picture. It was pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, James says, I want to see the rec receiving corpse with Carson. Okay. Jermaine said, I was going to say Puglisi, but he's not playing. Yeah, everybody wants to see the, the third string quarterback. That's, and I'm not being uh, smart ass. Every, everybody wants to see. No, of course we do. Yeah. Back Gunner, quarterback. I mean, everybody wants to see what Gunner Stockton can do. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see here. Garrett Key says secondary has my interest peaked in Arian Smith. There's been a lot of talk about Arian Smith mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so far this offseason. More more so than we haven't heard this much about Arian Smith all his whole time, right? Yeah. yeah. For the most yeah. part. He he's kind of one of those guys that, that's uh kind of peaked in this this offseason. Here's a different one for you from old Kane I Harris. Nitro, that's a tuggle. nitro tuggle. I like that. That could be a um, very big surprise uh, guy that we're sitting here next week and going. Remember when that Kane guy said Nitro Tuggle and he ends yeah. up with like four catches for one fifty? He breaks him one off. That's a that's a good pick. That's the type of pick you want in a G Day game. Yeah, you want, that, you want that like low, you know, second, third string wide receiver. He's because he has the chance, the opportunity to ball well, out. Three years ago, it's Brock Bowers. Everybody's like, "Whoa, this guy Brock right. Bowers. He looks right. pretty strong." You know, right? That's a great uh, point. Kevin, what's up, man? He says, how about them dogs from Menlo, Georgia? That's a fake city, Kevin. Thank so you for the fake city. Or spelled wrong. It could be spelled wrong. Could be spelled wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. I think he's right. Uh, Chris Adams says, go dogs. What's up, man? Alex Page, Eddie, the defense was dialing up blitzes in previous years. Yeah. So they, they, they blitz. I think it's, he, come on, I think it's more – It's more. They, they do more than just touch. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. yeah they do. They do. I mean, when they get anywhere near the quarterback, they, the referees blow oh, the yeah, The quarterback is yeah. different. Yeah, That's what I'm talking about. But I'm wanting to see left tackle versus defensive end. Let's let's see what happens. It's it's so you're talking okay. So so let's let's get this right for Andy because I, I feel like we kind of did Andy wrong there. Andy yeah, wants to did. see the Andy wants to see the battle between Ernest Green and Stackhouse as it goes yeah. before it gets to the quarterback because obviously yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not, obviously you don't tackle. Well, that's yeah. fair. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I want to see how the O line and D line looks because if our O line can dominate the D line or vice versa, we know we're pretty good. Well, there's uh, speaking of that, there's been a couple comments and things mentioned on ujsports.com. If you're not a member, man, now is the time to sign up. It's if you're not a member, why? What is wrong with you, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. So it's, much uh, great info. Stuff's heating back up. The the football unless Scotty writes what we're hearing, then it's not good. <laughs> and you want to yeah. click on it, but it's never good. Yeah, the the wheels guys, they've kind of been in the shop for a little while. They're a little creaky, but they're starting to roll now. We're starting to oil them back up. The the wheels for the football machine starting to get going. So curious to uh, see what's happening. Go over to UJSports.com. But I'll, I'll let you behind the curtain just a little bit. There's two things that a lot of insiders are a little bit concerned about right now. It's the uh, offensive line's run game ability, kind of to push that defensive line off the ball. But then just vice versa, it's the defensive line. And what they're able to do, uh, who can step up. So I would be curious. A lot of folks have talked about the transfer portal. It'll be opening up after the spring game. Uh, if Kirby potentially goes and looks at a defensive lineman, or if he just wants to develop them within, that's something that we, you know, we'll keep our eye on. Not sh not showing you, you know, any inside baseball with that. Don't know where Kirby's looking at. If he's looking to bring guys in from the portal, but that's just one spot to look at. And very good point from Andy. Watch that offensive line uh, with the run game and the defensive line just in general. See who's standing out there. Let's get back to the comments real quick, though. James Carraway says Oscar Delp is one he's watching. A big game from him before the transfer comes in. Oh, hmm. that's a that's a that's something. That's something I I, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking that. 
Or your big uh, Euroset set comes in, right? Yeah. He, he's getting a lot of hype. He's getting a yeah. lot of hype. Uh, Josh Skelton, beautiful dog there on the bed, my friend, says, sup, guys, go dog. Sounds like Arian and Colby showed out Saturday, and the D-line played well, too. Yeah. Somebody Where's, must be subscribed to UGA Sports. Must right, have yeah. <laughs> where uh, – we're, we've brought up Arian twice now. Let's let's talk about this. Where do we see him this year? Forty catches, six hundred yards. You think? I'm just asking. I'm throwing. I just threw numbers. Those are the first two numbers that popped in my head. What was his point? His stat was. I, I I I don't think so. And and Paul, I think the reason is because they're going to distribute the ball so many different places. You know, it's just. They're talking about him a lot, man. I know, I know. But when it comes to game time, Beck is just all over the place. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. He doesn't like target in on one guy. And the offense is so set up, ETN out of the backfield, all these kinds of things, different tight ends. You may have a 12 personnel set up. You hit two different tight ends. Who knows? I don't know. But I'm dying to see Arian Smith take the top off the defense numerous times, not just one time during the year. And that's what he has like world class speed. They were talking about it this week. He has speed that no one in the NCAA can touch. So use it, right? I mean, send the guy and let's let's hit him. I'm I'm ready to see him do it. But he's got to he catch the football. He, he had some trouble with that last year. Yeah, he, he only had eight catches last year. So. Right. Yeah, but but what did he average per catch? Average per catch was nineteen point one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so what he had, so what he had one hundred and sixty yards last year, close to it. One fifty three. Yeah. Yeah, Where are we at? Where, give me some. Give me some predictions on Arian Smith, guys. I don't think he's getting forty catches. I, I think mean, that's a lot. I, yeah. I could see him getting twenty five, yeah. but I don't. I don't see twenty five five hundred. I mean, that's. I think that's realistic. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's realistic okay. because yeah. if he gets a couple of like if he hits two or three long catches, if he gets a sixty, yeah. couple of sixties, I mean, he's almost there anyway. So yeah, I could see twenty five five. Okay. Goat Dog says, I'm like Rob Lowe with the NFL hat on. I'm rooting for everyone. I like that, Goat Dog. I like that. <laughs> Alan Hampton says, uh, in our house, the dogs rate miles above the Masters. That could change if they change the Masters to full contact golf. <laughs> 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 Saying that, why don't they change oh, the Oh, yeah. Damn it. Uh, yeah, no, that, that would that yeah, would yeah. never happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would never happen. Speaking of full contact golf, Played golf Saturday, guys, just to give you a little backstory into the life of Paul. And uh, these guys hit into us, man. And I didn't, I didn't too much really? appreciate it. We were playing. Did somebody uh, hit you? Did they hit you? No, it was damn close. Oh, really? And, uh, did you yeah, throw so the I ball did. back at them because that's what you're supposed to do. You throw it back. What, at well, what I did, what I did was I kind of looked up there because they could definitely still see us, and I just got a tee out and just teed that thing up and just shot it. You know, really? half into no, the woods. You did not. No, I didn't. I didn't. I oh it. man. I knew you didn't. No, but but I did look up at him and and have a, a big glean on my face. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's just let's have let's be cordial around here, folks. Yeah. It was this. It was a Saturday after Easter. You know, you don't have to hit into me. We're we're making good pace. You know, I paid did a lot of money. Did, did he apologize? Did he no, say he didn't come see us after the eighteen or nothing. nothing? He didn't no. yell four. <laughs> wow, no, no, that's that's throw the ball in the woods. Yeah, right. And I should have, but you again, no, you should. I, I don't have. Be, you should have yeah, taken it back no up. Balls. That would have been epic. Yeah, I don't have Eddie's up. muscles to back that up. So. Or balls. Ah, I got, I got, hey, I got some of those, Eddie. Uh, well, Kevin you didn't use them. A, not a fake city. It's in Chattooga County, Georgia. So Kevin not only doubled, he he didn't he doubled down. He picked a fake county to put his fake city in <laughs> in the state of Georgia. So props to you, Kevin. That, Making uh, this stuff up. Yeah, yeah he, he doubled That's down awesome. on that. <laughs> uh, we're, we're behind on comments. You guys are crushing it tonight. Uh, let's see here. Zach, the chosen one, Whitfield, says, will we ever see another Bowers? Probably not, man. No. Yeah, I don't think probably so. Not. No. I mean, just like you probably won't see another Darnell Washington, too, if you yeah. want to just throw oh, both man. in the same category. Yeah. You're still right. And we have both of those guys on the same team. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the new safeties could be exciting. I'm, I'm cool with that. Oh, that is yeah. a good pick. I want to see Aguero out there with the ones. Mm -hmm. I want yeah. to see what, what mm -hmm. that rotation – oh, what the rotation is looking like for the uh, corners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like they've got three that could start. And then you've got yeah. potentially Ellis Robinson. Ellis Robinson. Lurking. you got yeah. him lurking too. Yeah. He's, he's going to start. He's starting. He's going to well, start. So, so hold on, no. Hold on. You got Humphreys. You got oh, – my mind just totally went blank. Everett. And mm -hmm. then you got Daniel Harris. So you mm -hmm. got three. 
But then, like I said, you got you got Ellis Robinson. Ellis Robinson waiting in the wings. Yeah, I'm yeah. curious to see if he's. Uh, I'm assuming he's going to be starting for the second team defense at corner. I would think so. I wonder yeah. if he gets to uh, change change jerseys and go play for the other team. I always love that, right? Yeah. You know, when the, when the guy gets to change jerseys and and goes and plays, you know, a couple snaps with the first team, or or he's on the he's on the first team and has to go play with the second team a little bit. Uh, I'm curious to see what that is. 400 yards, Garrett says for Arian. 600 is pushing it. Yeah. Kathy says there's a free game. Uh, apparently, it's five dollars. Got to pay five dollars. You, uh, Andy, I'm assuming you just pay that at the door type deal. Or you got to well, buy you tickets. Order, ahead? You can. Um, I think you got to buy my head because it doesn't look like looking here. There's not a whole lot of seats left. So. Oh, you have to buy seats. Yeah, but I think you can sit anywhere. But I think it's just yeah, like you, it's, it's an entrance uh, ticket. You can sit. Yeah. Where okay, you I was about to say, what the heck? This is. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Skelton says somebody has to mention Ja'Cory Thomas. Oh, Ja'Cory. You, I just, mean, I you just did, Josh. I'm in love with that kid. Yeah, that yeah. guy. Somebody's got to mention him. Bobby Sagas says George is deep and talented on both lines of scrimmage. They are. They are. But if you're over at UGASports.com, you'll see there's a little – D-line needs to maybe just mature a little bit more. It's well, Kirby awesome. said that. Right. Yeah, even if you watch the press conferences too, which That's are right. on this channel. That's Make right. Sure you Oh, this is a good one. William Gleaton says veteran wide receivers versus freshman slash sophomore defensive backs. Yeah. Yeah, we, we haven't been able to see that lately. We haven't, you know, there's there's always been a, a pretty veteran presence at defensive back. I'm trying to catch up. Let's see. What about punt returning? Chattuga is near Alabama, Scott Anderson says. He's he's sticking up for Kevin. Scott, you can't do that. Don't do that. You like giving Kevin a hard time. Um Goat Dog says, Paul, you should start guessing what area of Georgia you think these fake cities are in. I definitely will. I will for sure if I see another one come across here. But it has to be a real city, right? Don't don't throw me a fake, fake one. We have not talked about uh, Spencer Strider yet, Hunter. We're, we're getting to the Braves. We're getting there. We're getting there. Josh Skelton says, no TID or Miller on the defensive line. Remember? Yes. Yes. So uh, we, we have to remember that. We have to remember that. Guys, I think we got through all the comments for. So for Menlo is a city just northwest of Rome. I just looked it up. It's not a lie. So I mean, I knew he wasn't lying. I, it's, I mean, you know, I, I know you, know, you called him a liar. I heard you say that. This guy <laughs> no, is no, a I, liar. He is lying see, I, about where he lives. That's what you no, said. I know that, like, when they shout out their city, it's a real city, but it sounds fake to me because I've never heard it. Oh, okay. So that's so, what, like, the play. Well, is. Your brain is fake. Not to. Yeah. Not. Okay. All right. That's all right. Good. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know you took account. So you're just giving I, you're giving the people that take their time and effort to log onto the show and make a comment. You just make fun of them. That's what you do. No, no. Yes. What I'm. It's exactly just, what you do. <laughs> no. You yes. Just, no. Cocaine Eddie is not coming what out. What do you do? No, it's it's a play. It's a joke. It's a it's a funny ha ha. But it may be yeah, hurtful. It it's probably hurtful. This guy. He was probably born and raised in Menlo, and you're like crapping all over it. Like it's not real. You made it up. I mean, that's probably hurtful to that. He may be crying, Paul. Kevin. Kevin is a longtime watcher of the show. I, I'm. <laughs> Kevin is. Me, me and Kevin are close. There's 500 people. Oh, yeah, y'all are real close. I'm sure y'all are like <laughs> best buds, right? Yeah. 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 Sweater man's here. What's up, sweater man? That's sweater man. He said he's joining the show. We'll see. We'll see. You better have the sweater on if you're coming on the show. Nobody's going to recognize but, you. But I mean, we're not. What are we going to talk? Nit for five seconds? I mean, come on. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're, no, it's not. We'll, we'll save it if he's coming on the show. We won't. That was our next talking point from Andy yeah, Stats. No, it's going to be well, very quick. Little, very quick. Nobody Andy wants to Stats talk about that. Still. I don't know. We'll see. Does he's not sticking with you? I don't know. That's fine. I don't care. I like I that. I like you that. You can call me good. Stats still, yeah. Yeah. We'll skip basketball. We do have a bullet point there, but if Sweaterman is joining us, we'll save that Got one it. bullet point and let him have fun with that. Um, UGA baseball went one and two in Starkville versus Mississippi State. I, I went to bed early last night, guys, so I didn't mm. see the whole I, watched, I saw it live. I watched it Did live. You, so let me get through it, and I'll ask you. Okay. Uh, the catcher for Mississippi State stood over uh, Dylan, Dylan Carter. Carter. Yeah, at home, and then need him in the rib cage twice, and so after he tagged him out, after he had tagged him out, and it was a good tag, it was a clean play. There was nothing malicious on either side. He tagged him out, and he need him twice and stood over him for no right. reason that I could see. So Go when ahead. I woke up, when I woke up, I had uh, group me messages from the UGA sports staff. I had 
text messages from Andy and Eddie. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm about to watch a brawl. Heck, yeah. What else would you rather wake up to on a Sunday morning than a good old baseball brawl? And I, I, I'm, I'm trying to find the video. I can't find the video. And so I, I text Eddie. I say, Eddie, where's the video? I think Andy might have sent it. One of you guys did. I appreciate it. And uh, I go watch the video. I'm like, what the hell? did I, I just wasted two minutes of my time here. Mm-hmm. They threw out, what, five or six guys from Mississippi State on that? Yeah, Is that what five, it was? Yeah. yeah. I think it was five. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> there, there was nothing that re- – no, I understand. Yeah. The catcher shouldn't have done that. But, like, the way that it got hyped up, Hey, I thought there was a brawl. There wasn't a brawl though. So there good was on a Georgia. baseball brawl. A baseball yeah. brawl is when people run on the field yeah. and, and they all hold each other, each other and they yeah. run back to the. It's, it was stupid. But yeah, oh, unless you're Kyle Barnes, Kyle Barnes was fine. Well, I was yeah. watching this live. I saw it happen live, and <clears throat> he was clearly out. There was no disputing that. Okay, so yeah, they went no, and reviewed no. that. He was out. But to watch this catcher do what he did, I don't know what he was doing other than hot dogging and trying to be an, a, a punk ass. And they they reviewed the play. Okay, he's out. So that should have taken two minutes. Then they went back and re- reviewed if the catcher had done malicious intent. Okay? And that could have changed the call. If they deemed that malicious intent, they could have ruled him safe. They reviewed oh, it. okay. Yes. Okay. They reviewed that for 45 minutes. It yeah. was atrocious. What? So did you did you watch the whole time for the first uh, absolutely because I was fascinated <laughs> what was going on. So please, what happened in the those 45 minutes? What was happening? Like I was, was yelling at my wife happened? saying, What the hell's going on here? I was yelling at the clouds, like you like to say, right? I was like, What the hell? This what were the ridiculous. broadcasters doing? What were the broadcasters? Oh, I mean, doing they were feeling I actually turned it over to uh Jeff Dantzler and David Johnston. I listened to them and they, you know, they were talking us through it, but just to for do 45 that 45 minutes. 45 minutes is how long the whole review took. And guess uh, what? Right. They ruled it not malicious. They said it was not. And then they decided, okay, we'll circle this guy, this guy, this guy. He was on the field. They're out. That's what they were looking at this whole time. But the review, you saw the play, Paul, and others yeah. need to pull it up and watch it. That was malicious intent. He need the guy in the ribs twice. You can't do that. I, I'm sorry. I agree with you in the sense that if you're going to look at it for 45 minutes, yeah, it probably should be. My right. only thought was because it had to go back to Birmingham, right? That's where their replay office is. You know how, yeah. like, when you – when What, do they have a carrier know? pigeon bringing it back to <laughs> Birmingham? <laughs> this, is, this is what right. I'm thinking. Like, you know how a doctor is on call and yeah. a surgery has to be performed? Nobody was there. Right. They had nobody in the building, right? Yeah. And they were like, oh, my God. So they had to call him up. They had to call up Debbie. She, she's on call on Saturday nights. Debbie's, Nobody's Debbie watching. To, Nobody cares, right? Get yeah, somebody up. Right. right. And, and it's Debbie's weekend. She doesn't. She's not That's for Debbie. fighting. She doesn't like fighting. She's, she's very peaceful. But Debbie had to drive into the office and look at it, and she had to look at everything. And she was like, look, let's just stop the fighting. That's what and happened. And Debbie lives 30 minutes from the office. So there right. you go. There's part right. of it. Okay. Right. Now yeah, it makes right. sense. Perfect. That's, I understand. That's what happened. That. Okay. But look, but Eddie, so did they say why they threw those the other guys out? Because there was no punches. Because they were on the field, and they shouldn't have been running onto the field, right? I mean, and they were jawing and doing – and they circled, like, those players – and said those guys are now suspended, but they didn't do anything. It wasn't like Paul said, where they were just throwing, you know, haymakers. Yeah. It was well, nothing. It was like just yeah. running on the field. Oh, you know how baseball players they body up and they don't do anything. It was a yeah. stupid. It was stupid. But James I mean, it was it was it was interesting to watch it take place. But I'm just glad they got the win. Yeah. <laughs> William Gleaton says, uh, "Did they give everyone in the stands a free hot dog for wasting their time?" Yeah, could you imagine sitting there for 45 minutes? Yeah. In the, it, being in the stadium is a little different than being on TV because on TV you're getting to see replay after replay. Mm-hmm. Like you said, they're circling for they're so circling folks in the stadium. You're just kind of sitting there going, What the hell is going on? You know, they're pounding uh, beers, Paul. I mean, come on, they're doing something. No, it, they probably have no, it was late in the game. I think they they have to quit selling those. Oh, so, they may have cut yeah, it off at that point. You might right. be right. Yeah. Right. It's, it was oh well, off. those poor Mississippi State people. This is what I goat dog uh, says. Quote: Hit me first, bro. That's why I say to Eddie all the time. I'm not going to hit him first, but once he once he lets out that first one, I'm I'm juking and jiving right. I don't there, ever bro. I don't ever punch first, buddy. Never. Well, I guess we're never going to fight. This is going to be a crazy fight between you guys. Then. Never. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a base yard, uh, baseball brawl. Baseball next brawl time between Eddie and Paul. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. Speaking of baseball, 
Let's talk about these Atlanta Braves, guys. Perfect segue into it. <clears throat> That's what a good host does, Andy. Uh, right, right. <laughs> oh, there's another. Look at that. Just, just a oh, elbow. elbow. I mean, <laughs> no, right there. Perfect timing. 30 minute mark right at the halfway point of the show. And uh, Andy wrote us up the good, bad, and the ugly. And I love it because if you guys could see my screen, I would I would show you, but then I'd show you the magic and I'd show you all of our notes. It wouldn't work. Can't do that. Yeah, we can't do that. We can't do that. Yeah. Uh, but the good has uh, bullet points A through L in them. I can't do ma uh, math real well, but I think that's like 13, right? 13, 14 bullet points. The bad has three because I can count to ABC and the ugly only has two, A and B. So there are more good than the bad and the ugly combined, but... Yeah. But with that being said, I feel like the ugly outweighs the good. If, it if does. It definitely does. Yeah. That's why uh, I put it. Well, obviously, good, bad, and ugly kind of goes that order. But, yeah, that's why I put ugly last. So. Alex says, Paul, you talking Falcons tonight, especially with Eddie Rock and the retro logo. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on him a little bit because we haven't, to be honest, Alex, we haven't really fully, uh, you know, gone head first into the Braves. So I don't know if this is a 10-minute conversation or a 20-minute. We haven't done it. So I can't, I can't tell you. We do have the Falcons on the back burner just in case, though. Uh, Marshmutt said, y'all are going to set a record for come at me, bros. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, James Carraway, we'll add him in here. Oh, my goodness. What's up, James? What's up, guys? What's up, James? Uh, Outside today, not in the bathtub, so that's good. <laughs> Holy clothes. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Real quick, James, uh, we're going to dive into the Braves here. So you want to stick around for a little Braves talk? Yeah. All right. So the good. Andy, actually, you know what, Andy? You want me to go? I'm going to throw, throw it to you. Allie Upa, okay. take over, my friend. I'm going to hit it off the tee. So the first good thing is the Braves have beat the D. They swept the D-backs, and they're 6-2 and two on the year. That's okay. a good thing. D-backs. Yeah, D-backs. The D -backs. The D -backs. Yeah, your, your mic's kind of going in and out, so I couldn't tell if you said D-backs or D-backs. The D-backs. How about that? You got me. I got you. Okay. And then now they have the second highest team batting average in, in Major League Baseball with a 300 batting average. That's a good thing. Uh, hey, 300 to get you in the, in the Hall of Fame. Oh, that'll get you in the Hall of Fame. Easy. They have okay. third most home runs with 13. And they have the sixth fewest amount of Ks with 70. So that's great. And, of course, that's you got good. Orlando Arce is killing the ball. He's at 387. Marcelo Zuna is second in Major League Baseball with four home runs. Michael Harris is hitting 344 with a 400 on base percentage. Jared Kelnick is hitting 579 with a 619 on base percentage. I'm gonna stop you real quick, Andy. I'm gonna stop. Okay. Because you. because you're you're doing great here, but you're you're speeding through these. Who would have thought Orlando Ars would be hitting 387? Jared Kelnick 579 and Marcelo Zuna four home runs second in the MLB. We're talking about guys you haven't mentioned in that Ronald Acuna. Ozzy Albies, Austin Riley, or Matt Olson yet. James, That's what's right. your thought? Yeah, I mean, Acuna, he's been terrible. He's the worst hitter on the team right now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. this is crazy that they're doing all this. And his OPS is in the 600s, like 400 points lower than it was last year. And Austin's still struggling to hit fastball. So, offense doing this without your two best players really clicking. That's awesome. And to add to that, who has the most innings strung together as a starting pitcher? Who? That would be six uh, innings. Who is it? Lopez. Uh, Lopez, yeah. yeah. Renato Lopez. Renato Lopez. Again, we never predicted that, right? Once again, just like you said, Paul. But Renato it goes Lopez. to show it goes to show the depth of this team. Exactly. Right? That's exactly um, the point. So when you have which is in the bad section, I'll also I'll go to that real quick, Andy. Skip to it. The yeah. bad section, Ronald Acuna is hitting 242, zero home runs, 13 Ks, which is most on the king on the team. Yeah. Normally, any other team, right? Any other team, if their MVP player was hitting like this, they'd be two and six, not six yeah, and two. Exactly. And the Braves came back against Diamondbacks on Saturday night. They're down what eight to two, six six to zero at one point. Six zero mm -hmm. on the game nine to eight without Ronald doing much. It's, he got it's a key hit there. He got a key hit there at the end. I mean, he, he did, he's yeah, making he some plays, but I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ready to 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 sell Ronald Acuna. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. way too early for that. Um, but you know, th there will be some folks out there. Uh, they'll say that. Shoot him five five six is in the building. I bet shoot him lives in a, a town I've never heard of. Uh, Acuna is going to have a stretch soon where he hits like five homers in three games or something. He's just started off slow. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think anyone's worried about Ronald Acuna. Yeah, but my, my son, I'll give my son credit. He brought up a great point. He missed a lot of spring training. Okay, his timing is not quite there yet. Okay, so yes, 13 Ks is not good because he cut way down on his strikeouts last year, but he had half or maybe two thirds off in spring training because that little yeah. knee injury. Yeah, so he's he only timing's good. not there yet, right? Yeah, he, he's behind on the fastballs. They're able, yeah. to, they're able to pound that fastball. Well, in on the I mean, all the other players had full spring training. So here's another. Uh, I'm throw this one to uh, to James here. Come from Garrett Key it says, "What's the uneasiness with Freed right now for y'all? What happens if he goes out again his next start and has a third bad start? Credit to him for picking himself up after that first. This is uh, this first bullet point uh, that Andy Stats so sent us. Max Freed has two starts and only pitched five innings, has an ERA of eighteen. Where are we where are we at with this? Uh, where are we at with Max Freed? Because I think there's a little bit of differing opinions." I can pull back the curtain a little bit. There is definitely a differing opinion yeah, within the difference. circle here on Max Fried. So where's your thoughts, uh, James? I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt one more time, but I, I am a little concerned because the, his velocity is a tick down. Yes. His spin rates are way down. His curveball movement, the vertical drop way down, and he's lost his hard slider. Um, that first <clears throat> inning, that's what was getting rocked. But then you look at the sweeper – and the sweeper was really effective, but the slider has been a big pitch for him the last three years, and he has not been able to throw that for a strike, and it has no horizontal movement. So I think he may just have to go to the sweeper, but it's his pitch mix is way different than it was the last couple of years, which is weird. Um, and I don't know if that's purposeful, but um, I'm seeing a lot different pitch mix from him, so I'm hoping he figures it out. But um, I'm just not used to seeing that curveball hang and the slider do absolutely nothing. James, are you assigned Max Freed no matter what it takes, or are you like, nah, we don't need to sign this guy? I don't know what camp you're in. We, I would love to, but I think he's going to price out too far. Um, so you're not like – I mean, you don't, you're don't. you like, we'll let him walk at that point. You don't really care? Yeah, there's so much money and things you're going to have to spend. I, I, I would love to, but it's not my money, and I just don't do you, think – Do you he's think he's a brave next year? I'll put it that way. No. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Andy, I feel like you might be in a different camp, maybe the same camp I'm in. Yeah, I think you know, I think I am. Um, I love Max Reed. Obviously, I said he was going to win the Cy Young, but <laughs> he's throwing the ball. He did heat it up to 94 a couple of times yesterday. He's sitting at 92 miles per hour, and the changeup is coming in at 87. It's five miles per hour difference. That's not much – major league hitters, if you can't get them off timing, you're not going to get them – you're not going to get them out. And his curveball is just spinning. It is not breaking. I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know if there's something going on there. But he is not. I he's hurt. Pitcher. I don't think he's hurt. Is he not? No. So, so that's that's what I thought, right? After no. yesterday's game, I was like, man, what if he's got the same type of thing that Strider's got going on? Like, that was the initial thought. Well, wait. Head. When he came out of the game, did y'all ever see the trainers talking to him? No. It was Kranitz. It was yeah, not the yeah, trainer. Kranitz. He's not but, hurt. But where is that three, four, five miles per hour on the fastball? I don't know. Yeah, it's just not gone forever, right? And then we have Kane Harris say, just hell, just get rid of him, which I think no, that's this the is the camp that Eddie's in. Just cut him? I mean, this what is does the that camp mean? Eddie's. This is the camp Eddie's. No, that, that, okay, yeah, cut him. I mean, that's, hey, come on. No, but I'm. Eddie's, you're close. You're close. I've never more been a Max here. guy. I've never been a Max Freed guy. I, I mean, I'm well, just he, like, up until this year, he has a 304 career ERA. A 304. Good to me. That is ace level stuff. Yeah, we, we know it's sarcasm, Kane. We know. We know. I mean, he, he's an ace, but I don't know. Maybe he's not anymore. Maybe there's something going. Maybe his arm's done. Uh, I, I mean, he did, he did have Tommy John before, so he's already had Tommy John. Maybe he's got all the miles out of that arm. We don't know. But what, I, what, what, what camp are you in, Eddie? We know what camp you're in behind the scenes. Where you at? I mean, we're going to let him ride this season out and see how it goes, but he's not going to be a brave next year. I'm with James. I don't think they're going to spend the money to do it. There's a reason Alex has not signed him to this point. I don't think Alex, I don't think Alex Anthopoulos believes in this kid because it's always something. It's a blister. It's a hamstring. It's, it's sickness. It's something. Everything seems to follow this kid. And I'll never forget what he did in game six when he got stepped yeah. on. 
pitched his ass off. He won us a World Series. He's a hero in my mind, but he's not a long-term answer, and he is not an ace. Okay, Period. real quick before we move on from Max Fried, if you both think that they don't sign him back, which I'm in that same camp, I feel like it would have already been done by now. Oh, he's gone. This is his last year. He's gone. Okay, do you now – which is getting to the ugly portion of this that Andy wrote up, Spencer Strider, which we'll touch on. Now with what we know about Spencer Strider, do you just ride him out to the end of the season a la Otani in Los Angeles and let him walk? Because remember, there was a there was a huge talk at the trade deadline for the Angels with Otani. Hey, yeah. if you're not going to sign him back, you probably should trade him, right? Even if it's for you know two or three you know, A-tier type prospects, the Angels sat there and got nothing back for Otani. How many now games he's playing literally win? down the road from them for the Dodgers. How many games so, did the Angels win last year? I mean, they were they were kind of teetering on that playoff, that last seed. That's 73, why they did. 73 and 89. Yeah, but when the trade deadline came around, they were close to 500. They were close to the playoff picture, and they wanted to try to stick around with Otani. It bit them in the butt. What do you do with Max Fried at the trade deadline, knowing what we know with Spencer Strider? Because, because here's what I'm getting at, guys. You could keep Max around and make a World Series run, or you could take your foot off the gas a little bit, let him go, and take some prospects back. What do you do? You keep him. You keep. You cannot yeah, trade him. I, I agree. I think you keep okay. him. And Bruce, even if Bruce he walks, here. we saw Vans. We yeah. saw Vansby walk. Look, they let Freddie Freeman walk. Freddie Freeman won the World Series. Maybe less. Well, there were some extenuating course. circumstances. There were. Yeah, his, yeah. But the contract didn't get signed. And they uh, you, obviously, you're not going to trade Freddie. But again, they let Freddie Freeman walk. They let Dancy Swanson walk. Max Reed will walk, but he will not be traded. You, you, And especially if you can't do it, like this team's, I mean, going to be right there in the thick of the things for the World Series. You that's can't what, trade. Right. So that's why I'm asking. Trade. James, do you see where I'm coming from, James? No. Okay. Uh, to be honest. <laughs> That would be such a slap in the face to the guys on the team. I mean, yeah. what what a way to get guys who love coming to Atlanta, not want to come to Atlanta. They have this World Series window, and you're going to trade away your ace. Your ace. He's your ace. Yeah. yeah. You, you just can't do it in the Braves position. If they were in the Angels position, yeah, I see what you're saying, but we're still just too good. Can't do it. Okay. I, I just wanted to throw it out there. I didn't. I yeah. I didn't know. Uh, Alex Page says, you think all these spin rates are causing the UCL injuries or the shorter pitch clock or combination of both? So I love a good, a good conspiracy. conspiracy yeah. I love me a good Stop conspiracy. The pitch clock. That's Listen. the stupidest shit ever. Come on. <laughs> Come yes. on. But. Oh, they're throwing faster. That's what's causing UCLs. Please. Come on. But. The pitch clock, shorter pitch clock, because the reason Alex brings this up is the uh is Tony Clark I think is the MLB yeah. player association president came out and said that he thinks the pitch clock is affecting these injuries because it's not only Strider it's Shane Bieber it's it's some high quality arms Yuri Perez that have gone down early in the season here anybody buying the pitch clock being the reason for this I know Eddie's not I'm not either I, I'm not but I want to ask James a question because he played baseball okay I did not I didn't play at a high level do you think the additional torque on his arm incorporating that curveball like he did yes. may have contributed to this injury? I'm not I'm not a doctor. Oh. I don't know, but oh. he did incorporate that pitch. That's got to be additional torque on your arm. Oh. Did that help contribute to it? James? That that's in part. And one of the other things is these baseballs are are real crap that they're using. They're super slick. And because of the Trevor Bauer with whole spider tack. A lot of guys use that rosin and suntan lotion to, uh, or sunblock to just get grip. So these guys can't really grip with their fingertips. So they yeah. really have to dig in deep in their hand. And you can hear Glasnow talking about it. He goes, when you really have to dig in, you wake up the next morning and you're sore in positions, spots that you didn't even know you had muscles. So the fact that they, in a curveball especially, so you're putting it deep into your palm and you're throwing a hundred miles an hour fastball. I think that's more of a reason than the pitch clock. Um, you know, they're throwing way too hard, which is normal, but I think these balls are so slick. I played catch with one of my buddies who still plays um, for the A's right now, and, I mean, it's like throwing a marble. They're so slick. Is your, James, wow. James, you made is a great point, but is your dog right there? Yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. Okay, yeah, yeah, the, the dog was huffing. 
Yeah, the dog was huffing in the phone there, but he, I was. Is he, is he, is he humping your leg? I mean, what the hell's going on? Yeah, there? It, sounded, it sounded a little raunchy, he brother. Wants to play, he wants to play fetch. This is a PG show, <laughs> my awesome. friend. Let's see. Well, he was, he see was in the tub last week, so who knows yeah. what he'll be doing tonight. I want to see the dog. Him. Let me see a shot of your dog. Come here, Sonny. Oh, that's a good oh, that's boy right awesome. there. That's awesome. There's an all American golden, dog right the there. there. Yep, his big sister's inside. Uh, um, good. So great. So real quick, because it, I'm not going to lie to you, the, the dog kind of did throw me off a little bit. Um, you think so, yes or no? Not the pitch clock, no. Okay, but the potential for Strider adding the curveball, yes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I'll a lot. Yeah. So I'm not an idiot. Thank you. No. Well, Garrett Key said, preach, Eddie. I feel like we have one of those a show. I don't know what that was in reference to. It's a little bit further up, but we'll give it to you. I just wanted to – Oh, it was and the curveball. Alex, curve. I'm with you, Eddie. There you go. All right, you I got mean, two of them. So that's, well, that, that's was a, that was the 20 to 18. That was that. Um, Paul, do you see the comment from Josh Skelton? He said it's a UCL spring, no surgery. So yeah. there is an article that um, Eddie had sent me and Paul, and, and I actually retweeted it, so you can go look at it on Twitter if you want to. But it explains that even though they're saying UCL spring, it could still be surgery. But as of now, they don't really know what it is. So, yeah, if you go look on our Twitter and look at that article and read up on it, it's, it's really good. It breaks it down. They're just saying UCL sprain until they know for sure. So it wasn't there four scenario? It was a four four scenarios on that. Three. Andy? And the, there was three, three scenarios. It was the first three. one was six to and eight the, weeks. Yeah, the best was six to eight weeks. The others were out. The, hell, the, the worst was he misses this year and next. And yeah. Next. yeah well, if he right. if he goes down, if he has Tommy John again, he's missing two years. Yeah. But I thought. Really? I thought when when did James? Maybe you can answer this for me. When did Tommy John change from a one year to a two year thing? I thought it was one. Second. That's a second. Maybe that's that what it is. It. Yeah. Sometimes on the second. I mean, I, I've seen people on the seconds that same kind of time frame, fourteen months. But I mean, it really depends on how much damage they show um, yeah. on this. So I don't know if it's a complete tear. I mean, he could be. He like. I mean, what month? We're in. We're in April. So he, I mean, he could potentially be back next April and be ready to throw, but he's going to have to build that arm up for several months. So I think the fall, it's not that he's got to wait two full years to throw. It's he'll wait a year and then he can come back and start building up. But I mean, you look at Tyler Matzik now, he's, yeah, like Kevin just said, he he missed almost two years. I mean, it's been 16, 17 months for Matzik, and which now he was heating it up to 95 today, but, you know, he's just getting back there. <clears throat> okay. So let me throw this out to you guys. I'm going to play, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Let's say he's gone for the year okay strider's okay. done winans is not here to take his place who comes in to take strider's place is it somebody outside the organization you know who i want, you know who I want is it but somebody you know in AAA? wait a minute i'm gonna throw it around paul is it somebody outside or is it somebody in triple a who do you want all right so we've gotten a few comments on this i'm glad you went to me first so i could tee this up for the rest of the guys where are they at? Trevor Bauer. We have Trevor Bauer, Trevor Bauer, Trevor Bauer. The the why, reason, why are you shaking your head, James? Why are you shaking it's your head? It's not happening. It's just yeah, not okay, happening. Okay, because it's not happening. Okay. I, I don't think it's happening for uh a couple reasons, right? And I, I read this yeah. in an article. Trevor Bowers has been reinstated by the major league baseball, right? There was found no fault with uh the, the thing that got him kicked out, right? There, there seemed to be holes in the story. They settled I don't know. out of court, no money right. changed hands, it's right. done. The problem, though, is that he has been reinstated by Major League Baseball and not one team, not even not the Braves, especially the Braves. Nobody. Right. Not not even the Chicago White Sox. Right. Who <laughs> who knows what their locker rooms like? You know, it could be or the Oakland Athletic. I won't bring Oakland. It's a totally different ball game. But there's not a team out there that is taking a shot on him. The last team I would think would take a shot on him would be the Braves. And without any other team looking at him, I, I don't I don't see. I don't see him playing in Major League Baseball again. I don't know if it's the Why? owner. I don't know Why? if it's the owner. Why? Yeah. Why? Golly, I'm hot in here. <laughs> but but Why? okay, Why? Why? I'll just stop you. Why is Marcelo? Why? Why? Why is Marcelo Zuna still on the team? Well, that's pro that's a little bit different. It happened. No, it's not. No, it's is, not. There's I'll video answer. of him. Go ahead, James. He had too much. They would have gotten rid of him, but they had too much money to eat, so they couldn't. Yeah. He was already. So that's you know, okay. You got too much money to eat. You just let him play. Are you but, kidding me? And they said the 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 players on the team love Marcelo Zuna. They say he is a great. Oh, okay. The guy. players love him, so he can just beat up women, and that's fine. Come on, hey, I'm not. Guys. I'm not agreeing. No, no, I'm with you. Well, I'm. I'm just. But I, I'm. I'm just throwing it out. I mean, 
That is, I'm, I'm just sorry. The two don't correlate with each other at all. And I'm not. Well, the, the Trevor Bauer thing, I think, is more uh, the owners have gotten together and kind of blackballed him. He's not, Why? He's not gonna... That's my question. Why? Well, well first well, off, I, there's reports he's a terrible locker room guy, for one. Okay, well, then that's different. That's totally different. He also threw a baseball over the center field fence when his pitch, Which... when his coach came to come get him. God, it so it's, it's not like these are just false rumors. We saw it on the field. We, if, if that's what he's willing to do when he's getting taken out Ronald of the game. Ronald turns his, head, his hat backwards. We don't like that, right? I, I mean, love come that. on. I, I do, I too. But some people don't like it. Joe Simpson doesn't like it. There you Joe go. Joe Simpson's seventy-eight years old. I love Joe Simpson. Don't get me wrong, but I love Joe Simpson. But, but no, I, I think I think that I think that there's just a a, a lack there. It's not going to happen. So like we're talking about we're talking about something that just won't happen. So to answer your question, does he come from outside the organization? I say no. I okay. think that it is. It's probably going to be. Would be my guess. They're going to throw Winans maybe one or two times, and then we're going to just start this carousel of you know two. He's getting two. Uh, excuse me. A guy's going to get two starts, get thrown down. Two start. It's just going to be a wave of guys from AAA until until they finally maybe get to the trade deadline and look around. The only problem is though is that this team is built to win so much. There's not a ton in the farm system to go trade for a front end starter, James. Yeah, I mean, really, you can maybe go get a Michael Waka from the Royals. Um, yeah, but like he's middle tier yeah. type yeah. thing. He, he and, rider, right? I mean, well, right. And I, I think Paul's right. You know, they're going to go through the whole litany of the guys, and the whole goal is get AJ ready for the playoffs. Whatever Smith Shaver needs to do to get him ready, where um, his innings are limited, and then he's ready for you know that first round against the Phillies, that's the guy that they're saying. But he's not an option to bring in at this point. You're no. saying triple A the whole year for him. For sure. July, yeah. you bring him up maybe late July, um, August. Oh, okay. Some okay. Inning, but he's the guy. But you, I mean, you have a litany of guys that can eat innings. The regular season, they are fine. I think the division was won before the season started. Um, so just use all those guys to eat innings and just make sure – AJ or Waldrip, one of them is going to be ready for the postseason. Dylan Dodd's going to be the like one of the guys that they yep. come up a lot. Because I think that's a starter next he's the, like next week. I agree. I do too. Uh, Brad Snicker specifically called him out on mm-hmm. Bill Shank's show. Um, mm-hmm. Bill asked him what it was actually a question I got Bill to ask Snit. It was like, what uh, minor league pitcher are you most excited about? Not AJ Smith, Chalmer, or Hurston Waldrip. And he's he specifically he went said right Dylan Dodd. Dodd. He mm-hmm. went right and died. So I think and he's a lefty. I know Strider's a righty, but so that may be a little different. But Dylan Dodd is a guy that I think will make the next start. I think Wyatt yeah. make one and then Dodd makes the next. Yep. But that, I think to answer your question, Eddie, I think that's what happens. It's just a rotation of guys. And then maybe you and get to the trade within the organization and, until the trade deadline, right? Yeah. And yeah. you can hope maybe a, you can get a guy like um, Luis Guillermo or, or you know, they have Luplo still, right? Jordan Luplo, I think. Yes. Yes. You bring one of those guys up and let them get hot for two or three weeks and then try to and trade them off. Yeah. Waskari Noah. You never know. Waskari Noah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if he's I'm healthy, he's out. got his stuff. Yeah. So apparently Waldrop took 110 mile an hour comebacker off the hand today, but stayed in. Gloves. So. Hand. Oh, left hand. Okay. All right. So we're good there. Uh, Josh Skelton says Luplo's gone. So never mind. My thought of bringing a guy up from AAA to to let him get some at bats and trade him off for a pitcher might not work. Hey, James, we're about to get out of here, man. So I don't want you to hold you up too long, my friend. But I appreciate you stopping by and not being in the tub this time. <laughs> no, good call. My wife's giving me like the death glare right now. We just had. Oh some yeah, time. that's not good. And your dog's <laughs> humping your legs, so you got yeah. issues, right? Yeah, the baby's crying. It's it's a mess. Yeah, what a mess. All right, James. See you, brother. Thank you, James. See you. I cut him off too soon. See you, James. <clears throat> um, but you still got Forrest Wall. Hey, Andy. Let's get him some ABs right there before the trade deadline. Get, go get your little front he line. Scored that, he scored that winning run because he's he so did. damn fast. Well, he's so fast. That's right. He, he, <laughs> he is, he's doing what they need him to do. Hey, and let's not discount Jared Kelnick. He hustled on that bloop out, right? It looked like an out, and he got to second, and that's what caused the winning run. Jared Kelnick, he's becoming like these other guys, Jesse Chavez, et cetera, Adam Duvall. He's becoming a cult hero. This kid, everybody, I hear the loudest cheer for him when he comes up to bat. I love it. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's definitely good to see after the spring training that he had. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
You know, and it's not fake hits either. It's not like no. he's leading the team no. right now with, with 579. He's he's putting good wood on the ball. So oh, he's swinging finish, a good bat. Yeah, he's yeah. swinging a really good bat. Finish off the good real quick because I don't want this to go to waste from uh, Stat Stowe. He said, Chris Sales 1-0 with a 338 ERA, oh, 13 man. Ks and only two walks. Thank God for him. Man, yeah. that, yeah, that helps. Here, we would, yeah. We would be in a bad spot if he wasn't starting. He's a, he's a damn bulldog. Uh, Rizel Iglesias, like three-inning pitch, zero ERA. I mean yep. – this first two outings, I think he had a combined 13 pitches. Yeah, he's, he's he's looking, he looks out. good. He looks really good. Hey, uh, I'll, just, I'll just throw this out. The Braves bullpen against the Diamondbacks in the sweep, 14.1 innings pitch, five hits, five walks, seven strikeouts, zero runs. That's there crazy. you go. The bullpen. The earned, run, the earned run average for the bullpen this year is 1.87. They have two saves. They've only given up 20 hits, seven earned, and a the whip is zero point. That's why we're six and two. Yeah, the bats and have been awesome, but it's a damn bullpen. Just the bullpen. The, they, they went six innings yesterday and didn't give up yeah. nothing. So yeah. Yeah. Tyler Matic, 3.10 ERA. Charlie Morton, 1.0, or excuse me, one and oh with zero ERA, six K. He's gonna need Charlie to <laughs> Uncle Charlie to keep throwing. Uh, you know. The bad, we've gone through two of them, Max Fried and Ronald Acuna. The last bad, Austin Riley hitting 257, two home runs, second most Ks on the team with 11. Not, not, it's not. Again, it's it's much like it's it's we had to make some bad though, right? Yeah. So Ronald Ronald's on the bad list and also Austin, but I think we're fine there. It's two guys. If, if, if there's two guys that could be slumping right now, I'd take those two because we know they're gonna turn it around. And you're now, still winning a ton of games. Did you see what he did when it was three two today? Did you yeah. see what he did? Yeah, bomb yeah. in the game. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're talking about guys that are still helping the team. Zero worry there. Zero. The ugly though. The ugly though. Sean Murphy on the ten day IL with an oblique strain. He hasn't started swinging yet. When are they expecting him back, Andy? Uh, they thought he was going to be swinging by now. I think, and he still has. So as of today, they said there is no time to you know there's no timetable for his return. Man, those are tricky. Those little they are right there yeah. when you're playing baseball. That's not good. I hate yeah. but but uh, you do have Travis, Travis that dude just, is he's ridiculous tearing it yeah up. but I mean you need a it's shown oh, no you, no you, you can't have another I mean yeah, Chadwick Trump love the guy but he he Sean Murphy right no, no yeah you can't happening. you can't throw you can't throw Chadwick Trump out there every third no. start and no. and just have him batting ninth like it's no. No. Yeah, he got a sack fly today, but like he did, he did. That was a good bat. So. It's it's not something you want to see. That ain't right? Sean Murphy. I'll just keep right. saying. Uh, the last thing, obviously, on the ugly list, Spencer Schrider on the IO with the UCL strain. We don't know for sure yet, but could need another Tommy John. So, guys, we did pretty good there. Thirty minutes of yeah, not bad. Atlanta Braves, first time in the show's history there. And uh, you well, know, they're well, they're they're worth the talk. I mean, come on, they are, they are. So, guys, we appreciate you so much for watching. We are about to wrap this thing up. Before we get out of here, guys, uh, next weekend we'll be back Sunday, seven thirty. Have a lot to talk about. We'll have the Masters finishing up, so uh, you can you can stick with us right after the Masters finish up. What six thirty? Yeah, so? yeah, so, six thirty seven leads right so into grab the you, show. Grab you a bite yeah. to eat, and then just yeah. come on, hang out with us. We'll have G Day. Yeah. Uh, still haven't decided yet. I need to talk to Roddy for doing a G Day POS show or not. Uh, cool. but, uh, we might, you know, uh, talk a little football Ooh, that's interesting. There and see, see what we see and, uh, just get ready. Baseball's in full effect. Uh, basketball, the Hawks, they're making the playoffs. No. Yes. They're in the playoff and play in game. So yeah. oh, they're they in the playoffs, but I mean, All right. win a first well, game, but fair enough. And, and by the way, we'll be that much closer to the draft. Yeah. Uh, April 25th, yeah? That's right. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're less than two weeks than from three, Thursday. Yeah, less than three weeks away. So. Yep. So, yeah, we're close. Guys, It's we got through the dog days of the, the I would say the summer, but it's not. It's the wintry months with no sports. So yeah. we appreciate you guys joining us. Before you head out, real quick, hit the like on the video. It helps out the algorithm. Bring more crazy dog fans to come hang out with us. And we appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in with us. For Andy Stowe, Eddie from Ackworth, I'm Paul Meharry. This is the All Things Georgia call-in show presented by UJSports.com. Thank you so much. Be safe, and we'll see you next week.